Καλησπέρα σα. Καλησπέρα σα. Το όνομά μου είναι Ανδρέα. Γεννήθηκα στη Γαλλία και μένω στη Σιγκαπούρη σήμερα. Αλλά αγαπάω πάρα πολύ την Ελλάδα και χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ να έχουμε αυτό το συνέδριο εδώ. Και ε, βλέπω τη σημασία το περισσότερο για το, το Μαλιατάκιον Ιδρύμα. Ε, στο οποίο σερβίρω στο Board of Directors. Και αυτή, α πούμε, ε, είμαι εδώ με τη σφραγίδα του Πανεπιστήμιου μου, αλλά η ομιλία που θα σα δώσω είναι ε, σχετικά με το Μαλιατάκιον Ιδρύμα. Δεν ξέρω τώρα να μιλάω στα ελληνικά ή στα αγγλικά. So um, you have my um, my paper on the preprint of the conference, and um, I will not repeat the details that you can find there if any interest rises up from this conference. Um, the main concepts that I will deal with in this uh, 15 minutes are that uh, we know that um, values change across time and space. Uh, of course we know it, but the question is how does it happen and how can we influence the process? It's not predicting the future, it's influencing social processes. Uh, economic value, the second big concept, uh, is quite simple to me. It is the capacity to create wealth, uh, mainly an abundance of money, or other material goods. And uh, the interest, the key point of the conference is uh, how can uh, heritage, cultural heritage, create money? How can it make rich people a bit more rich? And how can it make maybe even poor people a bit less poor? So it's about creating money and material problems. Uh, I have to, to say that uh, sincerely um, I'm not in, interested in this framework. Uh, it's not my point, it's not my perspective, it's not my belief, it's not my way to be human. Um, the way in which uh, uh, heritage uh, has perceived that creating money and creating material properties is transforming mainly my, uh, say, my country of origin, if Italy, into a theme park. Uh, cities like Florence, uh, Venice, uh, Ravenna are transformed into theme parks, as people like Scott Lucas, maybe the world expert in theme parks, could define these kind of cities. Because they are frozen into a specific icon, which is not cultural, it is not ideological, it is not political, but it is a money-making structure. This money-making structure is called theme park. It means that cities, and Athens is going in that way. I was browsing around Athens in the last two or three days and is getting in a very good theme park perspective. And people, of course, that live in theme park, like Disneyland, are there to, to serve. To, to serve in selling merchandising to tourists, in giving them food, good accommodation, maybe massage or something else. So it's a serving kind of society. To me, nothing to do with culture, nothing to do with human experiences, nothing to do with what I believe uh, we call humanities. Uh, in that perspective, uh, how can we get out from this impasse? Because it is an impasse. Uh, getting out from it, uh, the research team that um, started its idea from the Maya Parkham Foundation in 2009 was thinking how to get out of it. And we have quite a beautiful icon in the, um, in the conference presentation because this, the visual summary of uh, cultural heritage is full of closed doors. And these closed doors, we need keys to make these closed doors opportunities to open them. I think it's a perfect icon for cultural heritage and economic development. Closed doors. And we heard from the previous talks that these doors are still closed. So uh, banks might think a different kind of valuing cultural heritage, but they are still 
working on uh, pretty much how to loan money, being sure that they can come back. Or maybe they have a kind of, uh, let's say, of shiny aspect, which is US-based, and they call it uh, cultural, uh, they, they call it um, corporate res responsibility, adding social. And it means marketing, because usually it is under the marketing department of the society. So to make the branding and the icon of falling down companies into something that might be accepted by the society. It is what China is doing now with the new Silk Road, branding the uh, China Investment Bank at the new Silk Road. So the good for everybody. Uh, beside that, so uh, the idea was how can we get out? And uh, getting out for thinking at the uh, pillars of the Manitaku Foundation, which is focusing on Messina and Koroni, was quite easy because there we have the people. The most important value that we can find ever are the people. And the people are here. And if we can, how can I move the slides from here? This one. Maybe Sorry, I come from a technological university, but I have some problems in this kind of thing. Uh, left or right? Right one. I'm trying the right one. But. The richness of um, and, and the potential that we had in our hands in 2009 were the people. And we were working on, on people. And uh, Messina and Coroni uh, was quite, quite rich in people and potential human resources. Um, I think you, you, you know the people that are in, in, in the pictures, but I will tell something about them uh, later on. Um, the core idea is, um, of course, we think that cultural heritage is important. We, we think that heritage is important. But the point was, if it is important, how can it be treasured? And if we treasure it, how can it help? Because to most of the people that praise cultural heritage, I would tell them, please, leave your, your job and give it to, to someone else who is involved in cultural heritage, if you think that it is important. Usually they don't do it. So they come from different disciplines, chemistry, physics, architecture, or whatever, and they start to work on cultural heritage, without even making the distinction between culture and heritage, which is quite, quite astonishing, uh, coming from people that were born in the 20th century. And of course, they knew Gramsci and Foucault. Uh, after that, so we knew pretty well it in 2009, and we were thinking, how can we be serious? Uh, we wanted, and we, we thought uh, at organizing a conference, and the first point is, so what? We, we will have another conference, and nothing will happen again. So the first thing that we were thinking about was the follow-up. So we work first on the follow-up and later on on the conference, saying which are the needs of the society in which we are making that conference. And on top of that, we built up the, the conference. And the success of the, the conference started before. And it's still going on. If we are here with the same topics, I think it is going on. Um, the Manitakum Foundation, Coroni, the link to the uh, let's move towards the Manitaku Foundation, Coroni, the link to the um, Venetian architecture, colonial heritage. You can find it in my paper in, in the um, preprint of, of the conference. Costa Navarino was another uh, valuable uh, asset of the region. Quite a big challenge and something that made sustainable development something real. And it's starting from the dream of a man who is uh, called Captain Vasilis Kostantopoulos. His, his dream is how can I make what other people are just speaking about? 
how can I make it in practice? And he started against everything and everybody. Because nobody wanted to, to do what he was envisaging. So his, his, his vision was so unpopular at, at the very beginning. But now, his vision is one of the icons of the region. And uh, if you see there, if you look at there, it seems like countryside and seaside. So it is a five-star top hotel. And you cannot see anything. So impact on nature and landscape is almost zero. On top of it, Captain Vasili uh, attended our conference in 2009, but he was very silent. Quite a silent, brilliant, old man, nothing asking, nothing saying. But uh, after the, the conference, he funded Cine Tourism. At the conference, we had um, Fabrizio Zappi from ITV, from Italy, who was making examples about films and tourism saying that what you advertise, you will get. If you advertise people drinking and destroying everything, you will have them. They will come and see you. And uh, I think, I'm pretty sure, because if you look at this, Captain Vasily got the point. So he started to say, how can I use a small Hollywood pro pro production of about $1.5 million and advertise? my Costa Navarino and the region and attract the people that they want to come there. Not anybody else, but the people that they want to, to come there. And the point, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to start the movie from here, but <coughs> anyway, you can browse it, you have trailers in, on, the, uh, on YouTube and everywhere. The big point here is that uh, you have a couple with maybe relational problems, with children, they like to read books, they like to stay in hot houses close to the sea, they like to chit chat with friends, they like good food, they like to walk around, they like to go to sleep quite early, and they make a good life. And these are the people that Captain Vasily wanted to visit. It's not only visiting, it's not only tourism, it's meeting and sharing life with them. It was his dream as far as I understood it. And it is my dream at the same time. Uh, on top of this, it, it is a matter of lifestyle. I put the definition because sometimes we forget what does lifestyle mean. Um, and now I'm concluding with the, uh, something like, like what is the big picture, maybe it's quite small, but uh, anyway, the big picture. So, uh, heritage uh, as the treasure of human experiences. The main point in heritage that interests me, that um, interest most of the people in my university in Singapore is how to treasure information, knowledge, and maybe make some wisdom of it. Uh, believing that the real wealth in the 21st century is information and knowledge. And where is information and knowledge? Information and knowledge is embedded and embodied in heritage, which is the treasure of human experiences. And the point is, in theory, how can we demonstrate it? And in practice, if we believe in it, how do we treasure human experiences? The one who will give the answer to this question will lead the world in the 21st century. The point of uh, heritage and resilience is quite a buzzword, but uh, even here, so there is a lot of confusion about. Resilience has to do with the coral reefs. Is something that comes from biology. And uh, if you want to make it simple, you need to get a chair, you know. Maybe we can spend a moment because we do these kind of things, you know. Right? Resistance is this kind of thing for physics, you know. A society can resist. You, you can make everything to the society, it comes back, it's resilient. But at a certain point, we call it tipping point. And you don't know how, you know, it might come back. And we live in this kind of society. And small villages, cities like Athens, Venice, or whatever, live in this kind of society. You might not believe to it, but it's true. And uh, going far, so it is resilience, you know, quite simple concept. Uh, of course, Stockholm people in the um, Institute for Resilience Studies know more about that. Uh, the Heritage Cycle, so it is a UK pattern for Heritage uh, Cycle, is quite well known. 
how to organize it, but um, in theory it's a very good thing. In practice, it doesn't make sense. If you don't look at bottom-up solutions. Bottom-up solutions is to engage people ideologically and make them do what you don't want to pay for. So, um, and sometimes you get some money from big companies for their social responsibility. In order to, to sell more products, they need to let the people know that they do the good. And uh, the main point to conclude is, is this one. The main point is to see our heritage as the treasure of human experiences. And going into this, uh, a new science of heritage is growing. Uh, it's growing um, among mainly three countries now, uh, starting from Singapore, uh, going to the US, mainly Washington DC, and China, mainly Beijing and Shanghai, at government level and at the university level. Um, it, it is at the interface of digital, humanities, we put digital in brackets because it doesn't matter, so numbers, of course numbers, but what does it mean making numbers of humanities? So it's just the humanities and the information technology and the technologies. So uh, we are dealing with knowledge aggregation, which is what everybody. Aggregating knowledge, uh, aggregating knowledge is what humans did since the origins of the time. Is making, having data is quite easy. When you connect data, they become information. Links become information. But when you are able to organize information <coughs> around something and you are able to make something, to make a chair, to make a car, it is knowledge aggregation. So you know how to do things and how to make things and where to get the information to make them. Very far away from wisdom. Wisdom is when we know under which situation to act. It is a vision for a shared future, nothing to do with the past, which is gone by definition. So we are speaking about the future. And knowledge aggregation in our society is the big point. But at the center, we have the human being. So it's the Parmenides philosophy, not the Plato one. And uh, we have Wikipedia, which is not the knowledge aggregator. Wikipedia is, it is a sort of less than an encyclopedia, but it's not knowledge aggregator. And uh, the knowledge hierarchy, it is not mine, but it started from Eichhoff and Rowley in 2007, as they claim, but uh, it has been demonstrated by a young student of mine that it is as old as humans are. He was picking up the Eichhoff definition from ancient Greek texts. Just to, to say that this kind of knowledge is embedded in our societies. So nothing new under the sun. Having this in mind, uh, Singapore government, Nanyang Technological University, in collaboration with the European Research Council, Maritime and Port Authority, uh, Washington DC, governments in China and in other countries, is building up what we call Singapore Heritage Science Conference Series. The first one was chaired by Elga Novotny. Elga Novotny, you might know her, is the co-founder and the first director of the European Research Council. That lady that administrated something like 50 billion euros on research, putting it in basic research. What national countries don't want or cannot fund anymore, European Union is funding. It is the hugest funding center in the world. And they are funding basic research. I think you know what, what basic research means. And we have people, uh, we have Bertie Lenderson, who is our president now, uh, before he was the president in Lund, in Sweden, member of the Nobel Committee. And we have uh, Andrew Tan, um, the chief executive of the Maritime Port Authority of Singapore, and other people around. And uh, it started in 2014, and we were working on heritage science as a, as a complex system, because, and I'm getting to the conclusion, because the point that you were focusing in the previous topics is that, of course, we have a lot of values to take care of when we think about heritage. And of course, these values change across time and space. So we are in front of an agent-based model. And an agent-based model means that we need to have data to, to collect them, to organize them, to model them, and to run simulations using analytics, mainly visual analytics. 
uh, we wanted to use complexity theory as the lingua franca to engage in these kind of topics. And we went on exploring and focusing real parts. The main challenge was Maritime and Port Authority being in Singapore. And they knew that I dealt with history, with the intercontinental network and other things. And the big question was, why should we care about that? We know what the future will be in 25 years. Because we are, we, are, we are working on this, not because we predict it, because we are collecting data and information, building the new harbor of Singapore that we will need in 25 years. And they are building it now. Main threats and challenges, the opening of the Arctic route, one of the main challenges. So strategic collaboration with Norway, they built up strategic collaboration with Norway. UK is, 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 is getting is the first country which got into the Chinese investment bank, leading Europe. Thank you. And uh, we are going on, on the uh, second example is um, how to work on the creative industry. We all know the cinema, the animation, uh, food culture, and everything is getting information from heritage, but how to organize it in a systematic way. We have the, the technology, we, we don't have the mentality, we have the ideas, we don't, we don't have the visions, we have the money, because we have the money, but we don't know how to spend that. Because the investment is what we call conservation, preservation, enjoying, what about the, the tradition, the folklore, and the nostalgia of something that I don't care about. And uh, going on, uh, the next appointment is, is, is in January 2017, is heritage and resilience in societal change. Uh, it is the next challenge that we are having. So how can heritage, mainly as we thought it is, the treasure of human experiences, help in support the resilience of society? The belief that we have is that everything, like the chair example, so far, everything happened spontaneously. We have grandfathers and children and families that little by little kept their kind of heritage. Values and traditions, but mainly values and knowledge. Now, the speed of change in, in our society is so fast that whatever we will not decide to preserve for specific reasons will be lost. And we have quite good examples for the, uh, not only Tian, Tianjin, but you can think of Kongqin in China, or at the big agglomerate, which is becoming the biggest city in the world because Hong Kong is joining Shenzhen and Guangzhou in 42 million people aggregation. In these places, heritage must be transmitted for a reason. But the first reason is food. The first reason is food. Second reason is shelter. And third reason is societal security. We need people to stay from as you were saying. This is the key word, the last key word. So uh, we need to, to make it funny in some ways, but uh, here is the region. And I think I, I will conclude with what I started and with the last slide to um, not to say bad things for, to, the, to, to the economists, but quoting Albert Einstein, a friend of us, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. So, the people that created problems, please go away. Thank you very much.